Before you start this topic, please ensure that you are done with ratios, variation, and percentages. They'll be used extensively here. Uh, we'll discuss how ratios of time, speed, and distance are interrelated in different instances. You know, once we do that, the need to take variable reduces a lot. I mean, we still may need to once in a while, but that will be far and few. So um, let's jump in. So let's start with the formula that we all know quite well. Distance is equal to speed into time. And it makes sense, right? Uh, if, let's say, my speed is 50 mph and I travel for two hours, then I'll travel a total distance of 100 miles. This is something that we're quite familiar with. But then something that we may not notice is that this is actually an expression of joint variation. Let me show you how. So D upon ST is equal to 1. D, of course, being the distance, S is the speed, and T is the time. So this is equal to 1, which is a constant. Then it means that if my time is a constant, then D varies directly with S. If S is a constant, then D varies directly with T. And if D is a constant, then ST vary inversely with each other. Let's look at these relations one at a time. So D upon S is equal to a constant if my time is a constant. Think about it this way, that let's say you and me travel for the same time. Then if your speed is twice of mine, then the distance that you will cover will also be the twice of mine, right? Okay. Then D upon T is a constant that is D varies directly with T when speed is constant. This makes sense too. Let's say if you and me are traveling at the same speed, then if I travel for two hours and you travel for one hour only, then the distance that I cover will be twice of the distance that you cover. Then another relation that we have is ST is equal to K when distance is constant. Now this is used quite often, so do note it. That for example, if you and me cover the same distance, if my speed is half of your speed, then the time I'll take will be twice of the time that you will take. Makes sense as well, right? So, for example, if we both have to travel 100 miles, and if my speed is, let's say, 50 miles per hour, then I'll take two hours. Whereas for the same 100 miles, if your speed is 100 miles per hour, then you will take only one hour. So that is why speed inversely varies with time or ST is equal to constant. This happens, please realize that the third variable has to stay a constant in each of these cases. All right, so this will become more clear once we take an example. Two cities A and B are connected by a single road. So we have two cities. Now we love to make diagrams in TSD questions. Uh, they are connected by a single road. Rita takes two hours to drive from city A to city B. So Rita is here and she drives from city A to city B and the time she takes is two hours. And David takes four hours to drive from city B to city A. Now, David over here, he drives from B to A. And the time taken by David is four hours. Note here that the distance they both travel is the same. There is only one single straight road between A and B. Rita uh, travels from A to B and David travels from B to A. But in either case, the distance that they travel is the distance between A and B. All right. So here, then I can say that distance is a constant. What does that mean? That means ST is a constant. So S varies inversely with T in their cases, which means S1, T1 is equal to ST, T2. We did this in our variation uh, video. All right. So this also means that S1 upon S2 is equal to T2 upon T1. 
So since S and T vary inversely, the ratios of the speeds will be equal to the inverse of the ratios of the time. All right. So we know that the time taken by Rita is to David is 2 is to 4, which is time 1 is to 2. The time ratio is 1 is to 2. Rita is to David. If Rita's speed is 50 mph, all right, so what will be the ratio of their speeds? As we discussed, since they cover the same distance, the ratio, the ratio of their speeds will be the inverse of the ratio of their times. So when the ratio of the time is 1 is to 2, the ratio of their speeds will be 2 is to 1, right? Rita is to David. Okay, we are given Rita's speed is 50 mph. So this we are given is actually equal to 50 mph. That means this must be equal to 25 mph. So this will be David's speed. Let's look at some more examples. The speed of train A is 20% more than the speed of train B. What is the meaning of 20% more? Recall from our uh, percentages module that when we say that a number increased by 20%, it means that it became 6 by 5 of its original value. So uh, when we say speed of train A is 20% more than speed of train B, let's say if speed of train B were 1, then speed of train A would be 6 by 5. So the ratio of their speeds, speed of train A is to speed of train B is what is 6 is to 5, right? 6 by 5 is to 1 is same as 6 is to 5, right? Okay, now train B, okay, first of all, yeah, let's go ahead. Train B takes 3 hours longer than train A to travel 720 miles. So we are given that they both travel a distance of 720 miles which means that the distance is a constant. If distance is a constant, then we know that S1 upon S2 is equal to T2 upon T1. That is the ratio of their speeds is the inverse of the ratios of the time taken. Now we are given that the ratios of the speeds are 6 is to 5, which means that the ratio of the time taken, let's say TA is to TB, will be the inverse, that will be 5 is to 6. All right. But we are also given that train B takes 3 hours longer than train A. So this difference of 1 on the ratio scale, right, it is actually equal to what? 3 hours. Because we are given that the time taken by uh, train B is 3 hours more than time taken by train A, which means that this difference is equal to actually 3 hours. So then our multiplier is 3, all right. Then our multiplier is 3, we get 18 hours is the time taken by train B. Now we are asked, what is the speed of train B? So speed we know is equal to distance upon time and the distance it travels is 720 miles. And the time it takes, we got is 18 hours. So what is its speed? It is 40 mph. Simple enough? With the use of ratios, it becomes far easier to do these calculations. We can use algebra as well, but of course we prefer ratios. Then we don't have to take any variables. We don't have to make a lot of equations and stuff. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Lara and Clara start from points L and C respectively towards each other. So there are two points L and C, each other at the same time in a straight line. Now they meet at point M. They meet at point M. All right. So let's say Lara is traveling. Clara is traveling. They take, for example, T minutes and they meet at point M. They start at the same time. So let's say if they start at 0, 0, if they are meeting at M, then they would have taken the same time to cover their distances. Lara would have covered LM in T time, in T minutes, and Clara would have covered CM in T minutes. Okay. 
and they continue traveling towards C L N respectively. So Lara continues traveling towards C, and Clara continues traveling towards L. Time taken by Lara to reach C from M. So this time is ten minutes. And time taken by Clara to reach L from M. Now this is the time taken to reach from M to L. This is forty minutes. What is the ratio of their speeds? First of all, notice here that let's say what is Lara doing? Lara is going from L to C. Her speed is the same throughout the journey. So when her speed is the same, then we know what happens to the ratio of uh, distance and time. Then d1 upon d2 is equal to t1 upon T2 because distance varies directly with time. So then we can say that LM upon MC is equal to T by 10. Now look at the case of Clara. Clara goes from C to M in T minutes and from M to L in 40 minutes. Again, speed of Clara stays the same throughout. So again, D1 by D2 is equal to T1 by T2 for Clara. All right. So this distance, let's say LM upon mc for clara this is equal to 40 upon t okay now notice that here we're talking about the same distances the same ratio lm upon ml then we can say that t upon 10 is equal to 40 upon t which gives us t square is equal to 400 which means t is equal to 20 minutes. So, Lara took 20 minutes to go from L to M and Clara took 20 minutes to go from C to M. Now, what is the ratio of their speeds? Fine. So, they covered the same distance LC, both of them. Lara also covered LC and Clara also covered LC. How much time did Lara take to cover the entire distance of LC? The time taken by Lara to cover the entire distance is t plus 10 minutes, which is 30 minutes. Whereas the time taken by Clara to cover the same distance is 20 plus 40 minutes, which is 60 minutes. So then the time taken by them is in the ratio 1 is to 2. That means the ratio of speed of Lara is to speed of Clara will be 2 is to 1. Because the distance is same in this particular case. They both cover the distance LC. Distance is constant. So this is our answer. That the ratio of the speeds is 2 is to 1. So then this is what we keep in mind. When distance is the same, then ratio of speed and time, they vary inversely. When speed is the same, then distance varies directly with time. And when time is the same, then distance varies directly with speed. Now let's discuss the concept of relative speed. First understand that all speeds are relative speeds. You know, the speed of an object is its speed with respect to a point or object of reference. So let's say I'm sitting on a chair right now. So my speed is zero with respect to my friend who's sitting on another chair right in front of me. But with respect to, let's say, an astronaut in outer space, uh, I have a certain speed because uh, the Earth is moving and, you know, the astronaut can see that the Earth is moving. It has a certain speed and I am on top of Earth. So I also have the same speed. Uh, but usually in our questions, we uh, talk about objects which are on Earth and our points of reference are also on Earth. So we don't really need to worry about the speed of Earth and everything. So um, when we say that the speed of a car is, let's say, 50 miles per hour, we mean that its speed with respect to a point on Earth, our reference point is on Earth, let's say a pole on Earth or something. Right? But then what happens when our point of reference is also moving? That is, uh, you know, when relative speed comes into play and when we need to use it in our uh, questions. So let's say when A and B move in the same direction. Okay. So let's say there are two cars. This is A and there is another car. 
This is B. Let's say there's a person sitting inside B. And uh, let's say this car is moving at a speed of 20 mph. And this car is moving at a speed of 50 mph. They start together. After an hour, this car reaches this point. This is 20 miles from the starting point. And this car reaches this point, which is 50 miles from the starting point. So for this person who is over here, what is the speed of this car? He sees that the car was right next to him. And in one hour, it is 30 miles ahead. So then the relative speed of this car with respect to this person is what? It is 30 mph. And if there is a person sitting inside this car, then he would see that the person who was right next to him is now 30 miles behind. So for this person, the speed of this car is also 30 miles per hour, but in the opposite direction. If this is due east, then this is due west. So for him, the speed of this car is 30 miles per hour due west. This is the concept of relative velocity. When both of them are moving in the same direction, then the relative velocity is the difference between their speeds. It is 50 minus 20, which is equal to 30 miles per hour in this particular case. And I hope you understand why. So relative speed is difference of individual speeds. Now, what happens when A and B move in opposite directions? So for example, there are two cars here, A and B. Let's say there is a person in this car. and a person in this car. So this car starts moving in this direction and this car starts moving in this direction. This is moving at 20 miles per hour and this is moving at 50 miles per hour. So this person sees that after one hour, the distance between the two cars has gone to 70 miles. So what is the speed of this car with respect to this person? It is 70 miles per hour. Because in one hour, the distance between them increased by 70 miles. So the relative speed when A and B are moving in opposite directions is sum of individual speeds. We will add 20 and 50 to give us a relative speed of 70. Now let's see how this uh, helps us in questions. So essentially all speeds are relative speed, but we ignore the motion of the earth and we'll continue to do so because we are talking about objects on earth only. Now, uh, when two objects are moving in the same direction, then the relative speed will be the difference of their speeds. And when they're moving in opposite directions, then their relative speed will be the sum of their speeds.